Hey guys and welcome to Top Channel 101 and today we're going to be doing this reveal effect using geometry nodes and things. So if you want to check out the project files, all links are going to be in the description. You can get the project files on my Gumroad page and my Patreon page. I'm going to open up a new blend file here to add my mesh. Okay, now let's start with uh, a new geometry node setup. First of all, distribute some points on these, turn them into points and then extrude them, wrapping themselves around uh, the object we have here. So I'm going to start by adding a simulation zone. Uh, this is just a loop that runs every frame. Okay, so you'll see, you also notice that uh, simulation nodes will lose the material. So we'll add that later. So let's first focus on mainly uh, the, the effect we're trying to do. And we're going to first distribute some points onto these faces distribute points on faces. Preview that, you can see we get some points. Because I want to extrude these points, I'm going to convert them into a mesh. So points to vertices. Yeah, you can see now we have vertices. I can extrude them and uh, extrude them because they're vertices, I'm changing that. If I extrude this, you can see they're going, spreading out like that because of this offset. And uh, if I turn this back to my spreadsheet, you will see the count of vertices increasing here. So if I play back and at some point, uh, the count will go to million. So right now you see we are frame at, at frame 13, uh, the count is 1.4. So imagine if we run this uh, for the length of the timeline, we're going to have a lot of vertices. And the reason for that is because this simulation zone, it runs everything inside here, every frame. So it's extruding every vertex in the mesh every frame and uh, because we start off with just a few vertices and then those vertices are also extruded for every frame that's why you see the polygon counts really goes up exponentially because we only want to extrude the tip are we going to use this top option that gets you the vertex that was extruded only so i'm going to use that i put it into the simulation output. We want to only extrude the top vertices. The first time this runs, it's going to extrude these vertices once, and only the the, extrude, the new vertices that we are extruded are going to be added into this uh, this uh, selection here, and that will be reused into uh, the simulation zone. So if I play back, you see that nothing happens because it's trying to extrude the last, the previously extruded vertices, but uh, on the first frame we don't really have anything extruded since it's our first time running the simulation so it's trying to look for the last extruded vertices and it's not seeing anything so to help it out i'm just going to select every vertex as the initial uh, selection we are getting an extrusion and our vertex count is now uh, not as bad as we had it before the frame 20 last time we had about 1.4 million now we have 3.7k vertices so yeah, it shows that uh, we're only extruding the tip and that's what we want. We want just the tip. That's what we have. And now what we want, I uh, want to extrude this while they conform or they wrap around uh, the mesh. And uh, just so for visual purposes, I'm just going to bring back the original mesh here and join it here. We want to wrap these vertices around this face. The way we can do that is just get the nearest face to this extruded vertex. So to do that, what we're going to do is get the nearest face to any vertex we have. So I'm going to use a sample nearest surface and that will get us every face. And uh, the nearest surface we want is uh, the original mesh, uh, which I'm showing here. Not the points, but the original mesh. And uh, we want to sample, we want to get the normal of that face. So I'm going to change this from float to vector to get the all the values of the normal. And I use a set position because we want to use the, this, uh, this new information as our new position for every extruded vertex. So to get this to wrap around the mesh, we want to use the cross product. So I can run this through a, a cross product. So yeah, if I connect this to the offset now, nothing really happens ex except the extrusion that is added by this offset. So I'm going to set that to zero so that we don't have that. And uh, we want to get the orientation or the direction of our flow. So I'm going to use the Z here, Z here. And uh, we also need to set the selection of the points we want to, to move around. So I'm going to use this top selection as well. And now you see something happening. You can see these are now starting to rotate around the surface. It's extruding them really, really fast. We don't want that. So what I'm going to do is just scale this down using an, another vector math. Uh, it should have a scale value. Yeah, so you can see what we have. Yeah, so something like that. And uh, you can see now they're wrapping around the mesh. Uh, for now, let me hide this original mesh by muting this node here. Yeah, there are a lot of things you could do here. 
Right now they're just going around the mesh, but uh, if you want, you can try different axis, a different axis and you see uh, that uh, they will now running in a different axis. If I do this for the X, I can do this for the Y, or even just use their own, the normal of the curves themselves. And uh, that will also create some interesting visuals. Or you can use a noise, a noise texture that can also produce some interesting effects. Yeah, you can see, you can really create some interesting results like that. But uh, I just, I'm just interested in having them just run across the mesh. Okay, one thing you will notice is that uh, they're not really moving. They're just extruded from one point and uh, the original point is always in one place. But I want them to move like in the original version. Curves have a trim function that can let us trim the tail and uh, that will give us the illusion of movement. So I'm just going to add some space here. And uh, because we're going to use curve, I want to change this. Since this is a mesh, as you can see from this extrude, extrude mesh, I want to use to first convert this into mesh to curve and uh, then use a trim curve. Nothing will happen except for the first frame. And the, the reason for that is because that, uh, like I said, uh, this simulation zone runs as a loop and uh, we are running this simulation, extruding the mesh and then setting the position and then converting this to a curve, uh, which runs back into the simulation. Uh, but this time, because the final output geometry is a curve from this stream, uh, it enters this simulation once more on the second frame as a curve and uh, this extrude mesh only supports meshes. That's why it only works on the first, on the initial frame where it's still a mesh. The simulation or the loop fails because uh, the ex this extrude mesh does not accept curves. So we need to convert this back to a uh, mesh using a curved mesh and uh, that should have, it should work again. Now, like I said, we wanted to trim the starting position of this as this is moving so that we get the illusion of motion. So I'm just going to tr stream, trim this a bit. And now you see that uh, this is moving. Uh, remember this loop, this simulation zone runs every frame and uh, we are trimming a value. This is a, a value of zero to one, which is just a percentage of the curve. So we are trimming zero percent to one 100% of the curve. So if we set this to 100%, it, it means that uh, this, this trim curve is trimming the curve by 100%. But if you do this by something like 0, 0 0.1, 0 point something, it means that we are trimming that percentage of the curve. Uh, that means that on the next loop, we will still have something to trim. Uh, but uh, if we set this to 100%, it means that uh, we are trimming everything completely on the first loop. So in the next loop, we don't have anything to trim. Uh, that's why we remain with nothing. You need to just set a very small value so that you're left with something to trim as the curve grows as well. If we don't have anything, the curve just grows and grows and grows and it doesn't give us the illusion we want. Okay, now with that, we can layer more effects. Uh, say we can turn this into curves that we can render uh, by just coming in here and uh, use uh, curve to mesh. And I'm going to use, our, uh, before I do that, I need to convert this to a curve, curve, and use an arc as my curve profile. Uh, the resolution can be something like two. We don't need that many resolution. And radius is going to be something small, yeah, something simple like that. You can also taper this. The head is larger than the tail. So I'm going to use a set radius and use a spline parameter, fit in the factor and uh, can use a ramp, determine how my radius is going to be uh, like that. Our reveal effect, I want it to, to disappear, but you can see as the simulation runs, uh, these never stop. So what I'm going to do is just expose my trim connect this and just animate my trim so i want these to fade away at a frame 100 so this should go to value of one so that we have trimmed everything so start simple like that and then everything disappears disappears fairly quickly but uh, in the original version you will notice that uh, i added a slight delay using a float curve. So here you just use a float curve and just play with the values a bit here. Yeah, that gives us a nice disappearing effect. So we want to reveal uh, the original mesh. 
Okay, so now we're going to create the reveal mask, which is just going to be a mask for every line that exists. Basically creating a mask where each line is on the mesh, on the original mesh. And for that, we're going to use another simulation zone. So I'm going to add a simulation zone and uh, I'm just going to join the two. This, hit play, everything still works. And uh, this time we want to use the original mesh, uh, which is basically the group input, uh, this here. Okay, we lose the material, so I want to bring that back with a set material here and I uh, use uh, the copper metal heat play and you see what we get. Okay, so our mask is going to be based off our geometry proximity, geometry proximity, and uh, we're targeting faces. So the proximity, the target is going to be these lines here. So connect those. Now we can look at the distance uh, using this output here and you can see what we have. Uh, the reason why we have an extra simulation zone is because we want to store the uh, this proximity mask into a named val variable, call it, uh, call it mask, so that I can use it in the shader. So connect this. Uh, we can just use it without storing it and uh, just to show you what I mean. Uh, but the problem is that these lines move away uh, as they move, the mask is a rest. So where they're not, the mask is a rest. And uh, we want the mask to persist for the, this revealing effect to work. So actually, let me just show you what I mean by using a color ramp to give us more contrast. So you see, they, the mask is a rest, drawn and a rest, but I want to just persist, the mask to persist. So that's why we, we are storing it. To store it, we need to create a new variable. Uh, it should be a float. And I just store that in there. And uh, I'm going to call this mask. Uh, if you preview this, should be the same thing. But uh, if we add, using a math node, add, add the mask to itself. So basically this, as the loop runs, we are adding other values together. So that's why you get, this becomes brighter and brighter until the, the entire thing is white. Now I'm just going to make this, can even just use a map range here so that the values never go to more than one. And we just need to store this, store in a named variable, call this mask and we should be good to go. I just need to go back to the copper, create a different, create a transparency shader, mix the two and bring in the attribute node and uh, the mask. Then look at this. So I can use this as a mask. Make sure that this is using alpha clip as the blending mode and you see what we have. Okay, one extra thing I added is uh, add a math node with a power node, an exponent value of two, just to slow down uh, the reveal effect of the character. And I've switched out the character for uh, this model here. Uh, you can see if I don't have this, it uh, kind of, it's, it's a bit fast. So you just add a power node and uh, that should uh, make it reveal a bit slower. I think that's better.